So I'm here with Christian from Reflex Racing and he's gonna show us all about their new chassis car set, essentially. All right, so why don't you tell us about the new Reflex kit? Uh, this is our brand new RX-28. It's due out in about a month. Um, what can I say? It's about a passion project, I guess 15 years in the making. We always wanted to make our own chassis and recently I finally decided to get to it and uh, I guess put the ideas into a, a platform and uh, this is the result. All right, so why don't you tell us what makes it uh, a little bit different and why somebody who's into super stock or even the higher level classes would want to get into one of these guys. Well, it's, a, it's a race car, right? I yep. think that a lot of the cars in the market right now are designed with a lot of compromises in mind. They're designed for versatility versus all out performance. And this is not a car that is designed with that philosophy in mind. This is the car with the lowest CG in the market. Uh, everything's machined on it. Everything's very precision. You know, I know earlier we were talking about uh, maybe some QC issues in the past, that, you know, the, the relaunch of Reflex started in my garage on a CNC router at home. And, and sometimes stuff could be out of spec and maybe not uh, as great, but old school mini Z guys, we were always fabricators. So right. in the yeah, past, that, that was never a much of an issue. It's kind of like drone guys in, in, in Gecko. Or even the printing. crawler guys now, like yeah. everybody's 3D printing everything. everything. Yeah, yeah, everything is. So you got to put some love into our parts. I mean, I, I'm first one to admit that. But we outsourced entirely everything on this car. So this thing Nothing is here. all new manufacturing process. Yeah, You're from the ground up. Yeah, like I mean, I don't think you ever had issues with our aluminum. Our aluminum is always outsourced. Our carbon sometimes could be, the tolerances may be a little off, uh, where maybe a screw was a little harder to thread in. Um, and uh, one of the things I wanted to do is that, first of all, I, I've always said it, our parts are for racers, right? It yeah. doesn't mean that you, you can't be a hobbyist and, and have a car, but our core market has always been the race market. I'm not uh, in competition with, sense, yeah. with with other retail stores. We, we are a brand, first and foremost, that just happens to have a retail outlet. But we also are developing our, our, our dealer network, and I'd much rather have dealers sell the car and support local groups than myself have to handle orders. Uh, we, we're still a one-man show, essentially, with a little bit of help from the family once in a while, and, and we're rapidly growing. So pretty much anything that you see right now at some point is touched by the designer. It's packaged by the designer, you know, right? Uh, or by, by uh, with help with friends or family. Um, so it's really a, a, it's got love in it. Yeah, I mean, it definitely I mean, is short. a passion project, right? Yeah. So uh, with well, this... Well, yeah, let's talk about the car specifically and what yeah. makes it different and some of the benefits and some of the cool with features this, that it has. What we took is I you know, I got back into the hobby about just about a year and a, and a couple of months ago, like the, the Mini Z scale. You know, we've been doing 10 scale for a while. And I knew nothing again, right? And the first, <laughs> yeah, car, I, changed, the, right? The first car I got was, was a GLR GT. And this is my original GT, the one that I did all the developing on it's it's still the very very first car that i got back and it's the one that i always run i, I tried every car in the market um, and as a designer of bigger scale cars uh designed multiple 12 scales uh, world gts f1s and touring cars um I, I found it hard to just always stick and not do anything i always looking for ways to improve the cars and and i saw the platforms and i was like they got potential but but there's so much refinement that they need to be made. Like, I truly believe that before the RX-28, the GLRGT with our upgrades is the best platform available in the market. And, I mean, I've tested everything. And, right. And, and really, I mean, Kemper is running one of my uh, GLRs, and uh, I did a lot of testing with the MRZ, and all those cars, they all had good features, right? Um, but none of them was perfect out of the box. And I'm not saying ours is, but I took all that experience and all of the issues that I was seeing uh, with the cars, and I was like, how can we make a car that a racer is gonna truly appreciate, right? So, the first thing that I wanted was was better steering geometry, right? Yeah. So, the, the first design of the car was the servo horn, because I wanted to have direct mount steering, like on a 12 scale, right? And right here, the servo horn was what I started the car with. I wanted to mount the servo here, but in order to mount it there and be able to mount all the electronics on the chassis, I needed to design a servo horn that so that's where the, the first element came up. And then the bulkhead, right? One piece bulkhead and the, the shock tower is an additional piece, but I wanted a bulkhead that was one piece instead of two piece like on the GT. 
uh, to save some weight and make it simpler. Um, and I also wanted to have very little slop in the front end. And this yeah, that's is a, that's important to me. Th this is what we came up with, right? One of the things about this car of the GT that I hate is your droop screws are all the way in there. It's almost impossible to get to them, right? You can kind of finagle and get in there, but you're in an angle. So this is a cool little feature. I designed a little hole so you can sit your droop through here, right? So you go through there, right? That's, that's a big feature, right? The other thing is, uh, and I'll pull this out. So here's our prototype, right? And the prototype had a lot of 3D printed parts. Initially, it was almost all 3D printed, except like the shock tower was carbon. But we still have a 3D printed bulkhead, 3D printed motor mount. And this was 3D printed. The knuckles were 3D printed. Right. The slider was 3D printed. And everything, obviously, with 3D printing, you're just trying to get a concept and see how it's going to behave. Exactly. Get the geometry all figured out. But one of the issues that we had was the fact that uh, the slop whenever you do a pin going through there, these things are so small yeah. that a little bit of, of play, which you have to have for it to be free, creates slop. But you see this front end is 3D printed and it still has minimal slop, right? Yeah, so one of the cool, coolest things that we that? did. I want yeah. to see that. I want to see that. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Right? That's, that's for being a 3D printed part. Yeah. You're... So one of the coolest things we did that we had to do was the upper arm is pinned through the shock tower, right? So that was a really cool feature. And then we got this caster spacer that also acts as a st stabilizer for the arm so that it doesn't sense. cock in the back. Yep. So now you got a really double supported both ends and you're still going through here. Right. Right. Yep. So that was one of the cool features of there. And then on the lower yeah, that, arm. That's smart design for and sure. And then on the lower arm, we kind of had the same issue, but we didn't have all the space. So what we did is underneath here, we keyed into the aluminum bulkhead. This okay. pin will go through the bulkhead here but then where the body mount is there's a hole in there and the pin goes all the way in there so it goes through the bulkhead and the body mount or the yeah and here the lower arms you, you can see there's more slop but this is yeah, because it's a 3d yeah. printed bulkhead but on the production car that slop is pretty much gone right yeah yeah uh, so that was where we started with right the front end then so re really that was kind of your bread and butter is like let's get was, this first yeah we, we worked on the front end because the rear ends of the cars in the market they're, they're pretty good right yeah uh, the yeah. gt rear end after we put the 505 the mrz i did a lot of testing with had had a really good rear end as well uh they had some weaknesses that we revised but at the end of the day the rear end you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, yeah. What I Makes did sense. want was most of the cars in the market, they don't have the pivots in line, right? So you'll have these pivots here, but then the pivot ball will be behind. Here, everything's on the same plane. And you want it on the same plane because that's where you're going to get the least interference. Okay. The cars on these cars, when they're not on the same plane, even though they feel free, they're technically binding on the end. Sure, yeah. Right? Yeah. So that was a design flaw of the, of the GT. This one doesn't have that. What does that create? It creates more free... Uh, traction like the car's freer is not as bound up in the middle of the corner so it right. carries more corner speed okay the next thing that we did right so we got the pivots aligned the next thing that we did is you know the, the motor mount is kind of an inspiration with the gt and a mrz and our 12 scale or if you're familiar with the crc 12 scale i wanted a slider pod why because i wanted to be able to adjust the right height with just four screws without having to take the axle right, apart. Right, you know, like pulling it apart and shimming it on the bottom. Yeah. And yeah. So I did that, and then this piece right here really is just there to set your right height, right? Okay. This one has an option part, which is the brass lower pot. The, the st standard pot is going to be all one-piece carbon fiber. Okay. But you really don't need it for structural integrity. You just need it to set your right height. Sure. Yeah, it's yeah. got two holes there, and if you massage an MRZ, diffuser you can make it fit i'm not running one i don't think there was a need for it right um but we started with that now with the slider pod i wanted to make a solid one piece rear axle carrier because that keeps your axle truer right um i could have done two pieces like on a crc or our previous 12 scale but when you use the carbon piece it can still it's harder to set and it it's not always going to be on the same plane so that was the next part so and that's solid all the way so all of this is one piece? This is one piece and this is another piece. Okay, so it's gotcha. a two-piece motor mount. Gotcha. I guess three once you add the bottom. Sure, 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 sure. The okay. next thing that I wanted to do was have that, right? And on the early prototypes you see here, we got two millimeters of spacing right here. And the problem was that I had no diff adjustment, no no uh, motor adjustment. Right. So I needed to move the motor mount. 
But once that happened, the issue was that the pivot was too far back, okay. right? So I could e either do two things. I could move the pivot forward or I could have very limited gear adjustment. Right. So what I that did is I said, all right, let's go ahead and move the pivot forward. That gave us another constraint. And it's the, one of the biggest reasons why these cars don't have the pivots in line, and it's the clips. These clips are designed so that they take auto scale bodies, right? Yep. And when you have the pivots in line, you can't have the clip. Uh, so the clip is two millimeters further forward. Wow. Now, that's, what you gotta, that's, that's really annoying, huh? Well, but what, it, what I found out was when you take these, right, this is mounted for a regular body. And instead of mounting that ridge here in the center, you mount that ridge right here. Okay. That's yeah. two millimeters. That's so you just perfect. mount it forward, and then that's the only difference. Nice. So yeah, your other bodies are not going to be completely compatible, quote unquote. Yeah, but, but I mean, that's not a. But if you're buying a new car and you're putting a new body, a yeah, yeah. Audi, exactly. whatever you're buying. But at least, you at least, it. at least you do have the option to use the auto scale body Absolutely. or whatever if you want to move that clipboard. Um, an another cool feature is this one's a prototype. So it's not slotted, but this body clip right here is slotted on the production car. So whenever you mount it, you can loosen it and you can adjust the height of the rear of your body without having to break your clips off. Nice. Right? So that's going to be another thing that a lot of people get annoyed with. That's pretty cool. And that's um, unique to this. Nobody, nobody else is doing that, right? I, I think there, there's companies that have optional pieces where okay. you can but not replace the them. Box. But here oh, yeah. is just screws, right? Yeah. Here we go with another one, right? With 3D printing we were worried about slop and you're worried about getting everything set up so i integrated these these set screws uh, not set screws but these tightening screws for the sockets like what they use on on 12 scales wow, and what that yeah. does is it eliminates the slop now whenever you build it fresh it should be pretty tight and sure but over time free. as it wears you, you can just tighten, tighten it up. them so that was one of the concerns i had about the rtrc mm -hmm. is it's like it's super tight super smooth but then over time you're going to start to wear parts down and that slop there's like no way to adjust and here's another this, revision so that we want for the prototype awesome. you see here where the slot was right oh yeah, yeah. you see there and you Same see thing. here in the front yeah this would take away space and in the case of the tires in the front, they would catch here. So I would have to go in and shave the tire. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, let's look at this. What we ended up doing is we slotted this side here. We slotted here. We slotted there. And then we moved the screws to the back, right? So now we don't okay. have any of those issues. Okay. And you can tighten up your car. Show me the front ones again. Just the... the arm doesn't have the screw on the lower arm, but the screw hole is back here. Okay. And on the top, you got it right there. Yeah, okay, uh, that's that's also a very smart design. Another issue that people may catch on the pre-production prototype is the fact that this ball socket is higher than this one. Oh, sure. That was sure. another problem that we had with the early uh, samples. We were initially just making one arm, but the tolerance, again, the difference right here is two tenths of a mil. Yeah. So what we ended up doing is we we're going to make a left, and, not a left and a right arm. They're going to be, you're just going to have a one and a two and you can you can put it on either side sure but it's gonna sure. have one dot here and one dot here they're mirror parts so now that's you're gonna good. end up with more precision that's right there good. right yes yes that's important. um then the other thing we added was we added a set screw here to hold the uh the, the hinge pin so the hinge pin the arms on the top they pivot on the arm so they should be free on the arm right because they're gonna tighten here on the bottom they pivot on the bulkhead right okay. and the screw so you're gonna have a different pivot point and that was just a design compromise for the car yeah 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 the awesome. other cool feature that a lot of racers will appreciate is is the Ackerman adjustment if you loosen these two screws that whole plate will slide forward or back right, right. yeah you were telling me and about when you that. change that you change the steering you make it more aggressive by pushing it the angle linking the arms like this you get yep. less Ackerman the steering is more abrupt if you go this way the steering is smoother and if you look at the steering angle like yeah. this outer tire doesn't turn as much as like here for example right yeah those are pretty much parallel yeah and here on you've here got, you've got it yes this makes the car have a lot smoother steering response it's a lot more progressive so you can be more aggressive on the wheel without the car being touchy yeah so you can just gradually it, it, it has a progressive feel to it, but it makes the car more stable, easier to drive. And there's nobody else doing that, right? Um, I don't know that None anybody else... None of the major else, ones, right? Yeah, th there may be other cars that are going to eventually start coming out with uh, with direct mounts, and you can always do that with shims. Because sure. you could always shim this fore and aft and get extra adjustment. Right, but this is just easy. But I wanted simple adjustment. Yeah, yeah, right? you just turn a screw and you're good. Obviously, we have our, our tested, true, vertically loaded uh, springs like you do on a 12 scale. Yeah. And, and yeah, that was a, that was a big deal, too. Uh, and, and lastly, 
putting a good diff on there. Like, I mean, everybody says, oh, ball diff is a ball diff. Yes, but if you come from 12 skill, and now we run spools, but the diff was like what made your setup. And right. a lot of our guys like using ceramic balls, and we go with carbide. Why? Because ceramic is really slippery. So you gotta tighten it really hard. And then what, it, what ends up happening is when you have a really tight diff, your car doesn't have any turn in. So this already has some, this some, has some friction in there, just enough. Yeah, so you can run it looser and it'll yeah. still engage and it'll give you more turn in. Also very smart. Right? Yep. So it's just the little attention to the details. And, and then of course, I wanted to pancake everything and have it as low as possible and have it, everything on the bottom deck, right? The only reason why the transponder is here and not here, because I can move this receiver. I, got, I can move it mounted underneath the shock mount, put it all the way over here and put the, the transponder here. And the only reason why it's here is because it's got to shoot through, out through the window. Uh, yeah. But otherwise, I would yeah, on, if I was running a GT or a super stock car, so now you got everything on the lowest possible setting, and the car uh, is going to be able to, to, to stay flat. So um, super, super low CG. Yeah. Um, the other cool thing, look at how small the tires are on the car, right? Because the suspension works so well, because the pivots are in line, because the geometry is right. Um, well, and, and I, will, I will circle back to the pivot. When you move the pivot further forward, even though it was a compromise on the clip, a further forward pivot makes the steering smoother on a car. It makes it less aggressive, it makes it stay flatter, it makes it less prone to traction rolling. The more forward you move the pivot, the more leverage that has to happen for the car to flip over. So you don't want to go too forward because then the car pushes, but if you go too far back, like the car's really responsive and real twitchy, it pivots really hard. But that was another thing that I think was, was big. Um, we'll release some options, um, but at the end of the day, the car in stock trim will have two differences from this, yeah. right? It'll have a different carbon piece right here, like what you've seen in other pictures, and you'll have a full carbon rear pod piece. Okay. Why am I running this? Whenever you have these three in line, the car generates more forward bite. And with whenever you move it forward, forward the, the car is smoother. It rolls more, and it's easier to drive but it's, it loses a little bit of rear bite. Okay. The, the shock becomes softer, Yeah. right? So by moving and having this right here, I just get the forward bite necessary for pan car because pan cars tend to need more, more forward bite. Um, so those are the only two options, but otherwise the car is gonna come equipped with the right springs. You know, it's gonna come with the machine, the shocks from the front are machine Delrin. Uh, uh, they're, they're, they're vented already. Um, they're easy to build. Um, all you're gonna have to do is slap it together. Now, my, my hope is that the production is perfect and nothing is uh, needs to need a little bit of massaging. I, I will always say is like, if you feel like you have a tight pivot, polish your pivot sure. balls. Like I yeah, think that's I mean, something we all do. Isn't, yeah, I was gonna say, isn't that kind of standard? Yeah, for, I mean, for, for the most part. For, for a pin car guy, you always should polish your stuff if it's not free. Now, if it isn't, Everything's designed oversized slightly so that it fits perfect whenever it's new. And then maybe after a, a couple of days of running, maybe you still have to start tightening the screws. Right. But for the most part, you probably will be able to get away without running those screws for a while. Uh, they're real small and they're annoying, but it's but better it's, than no option but at it, all. But it's an anti-wear yeah. feature, right? The car's yeah. gonna be more durable. Yep. Um, so my, my value proposition for people is, you're gonna get a car that out of the box you should be able to go run the fastest lap of the weekend at a national level race, uh, right. the fastest run of the weekend, and, and set TQ by a lap. This sure. is with essentially a car that's got a uh, $4 part and a probably $15 part, right? Um, so you're talking about $20. And yeah, the price point is a little bit heavier, but you're getting aluminum knuckles, you're getting machine Delrin arms, aluminum from bulkhead. Uh, oh man. The pivot, you can't see it, but maybe we can see it on the prototype, but this is no longer, um, well, the pivot is, is also machine Delrin, and it's also adjustable. Uh, it also has a slot on either side, and you can tighten it. Uh, you take these two screws off, and you can put some screws in there and tighten the pivot. Um, but it's but it's a hole, right, with a slot like that. Sure. And um, and it's kind of like a inspiration on the 12 scales, where you can you can tighten it, and the fact that it's it's just a cylinder, you don't ever have pod links. You don't have to space your pivot ball so that your links aren't binding. Um, I don't think I have one in my spare parts. I, I mean, but we can kind of see. It's, it's, it is hard to see, but yeah. But I can probably take it off of the prototype and I'll show you guys the pivot.
So here's the pivot, right? Here we got our slots. And you can, these are through holes that are threaded, but you basically mount the screw on the top. And you got your little screw holes right here. And that's how you'll tighten the pivot. It's a cylinder, it's Delrin, so it's super slippery. And it's a one piece mount for your shock brace. It's super light, Yeah. you know? Um, and here, these will be slotted. So you'll pull this out and you probably can do it mounted. You just take off this, the shock mount. Right, and you'll slot this up and down to adjust your body mount height. Since it's pull apart, you can look at this one piece battery mount slash shock mount. It's got two adjustment holes right there, so you can adjust the angle of your shock and the length of your shock. Uh, but also, we got our battery mounts for the uh, O ring mount all in one piece. It's okay. lightweight, it's yep. simple, uh, and the car is very modular. Like, if I take these three screws out, I can take the whole front end of the car out. Oh, that's nice. Right? I always like that because it makes it easier to work yeah, on. You take these two screws out and you take that whole thing Oh, yeah, so, so much easier out. to work on. Just pull two yeah, screws. So, like, so that's another thing. That's it's, slick, it's, yeah. it's very low parts count. Like, I think it took me maybe three hours to build a prototype, the, the production car, from right. scratch. Uh, obviously, there was some hand fitting that I had to do because it's a production sample. And then sure, we take sure. notes of where we are having issues. And that's why we do it. And that's why it's taken so long. And my end goal is for it to be perfect right yeah. but inevitably i'm sure people will find issues that we'll have to revise well, you, you, there's things that you don't account for sometimes or like you said there's just tiny variations that can but but if you're a racer this should be the car for you like if you're a guy that's hardcore that's a, that's a tinkerer that wants to get into something serious it also is going to give you a more premium feel i think that was one thing that i really wanted to, to okay. emphasize like it's it's like a treat having a car that's really nice like you look at them next to each other and even though good. this car is, is fully upgraded it, this just looks like it has a very premium feel to it like all the sure. material quality all the parts everything is made uh to where it's lightweight and high quality with these cars like you can put a lot of mach uh, machined aluminum on it and that's awesome but then you start really adding weight right this car yeah. with some of these wolfram rc tungsten weights we got two grams here we got two here and two here so I got six grams added to the car. Mind you, we got aluminum, shock tower, bulkhead, knuckles. And you still had to add weight. And the car yeah. is 152 grams ready to run. Yeah. So it, it's it's super duper lightweight, right? Um, so that was all the areas that we wanted to really emphasize. So that whenever you're running super stock, for example, you may come up with a car with a Lexan Jumarema body, with a Lexan roof that is going to be right around 160 grams. Sure. So sure. I think that's the minimum. I think we've gotten them down to 158, 157, depending on your electronics, your wiring. Yeah. Uh, if you run like a like a plastic KCSC, it's even going to be lighter. Uh, so you can start actually adding weight, like underneath these these things right here or here. Uh, we have plans for a solid uh, brass chassis for those that okay, want nice. something that is a little bit heavier and weigh down the car, make it stay flatter. Sure. Some, some people if you want it even mellower <coughs> front end. Um, okay. We, our, our options are made so that people can tinker with it, but they're gonna be that. They're gonna be options. They're not gonna be like, oh, you need to get that. Oh, you just got that car. Oh, did you get this, 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 and that? No, <laughs> right. it's like, hey, listen, out of the box, you're good the to box, go. Out of the box, you should be good to go. Buy a spring set if you want to tune. Uh, and, so for somebody that's just kind of getting into super stock even, mm -hmm. Are your build instructions and settings out of the box going to be pretty much 95%? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to put what my standard setup is, right? Okay. Um, we'll probably have a, a – it's – the kit in kit form, I think, is going to be tailored for super stock. Let's put it that for way. Super it's stock, the biggest okay. class. Yes. So my main focus – and 75% of the development was done – with a super stock body on there, with a Joe Marema body. Um, well, I mean, reason, that, that, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I wanted to make something and not people think, oh, that car was designed for modified. No, it was designed with with super stock in mind. Like that was my end goal was to make somebody, something for, for, for racers that they could just buy, put together, like an X-Ray, like an Awesomatics, where you just get it out of the box and it's competitive, right? Nice. You're always gonna have options, but I, I always emphasize that they're options, not needs. Uh, I'm, I'm very big on that. So, um, 
obviously the, the tinkerers, the more experienced guys are always going to want to try different stuff and we'll have some options for people to tinker. And I'm already conceptualizing that hopefully for like a, like a second production run, if we sell out of the first one, which we're well on our way of selling out the first production run without it even being released, is we're going to release an option front end that's going to be more simple. It's going to be for the old school guys. It's like an old school front end for the MROT, the Kyosho. Mini Z front ends, uh, oh, okay. guys. It's gonna be like the MRO two style front end, where it's just a kingpin uh, with with a spring over the knuckle. Yeah, that is gonna be set it and forget it. And I think that at the ultimate end, if you're a hobbyist, my goal is for like the second gen of kits. You know, because you got to start thinking ahead, and that sure. may be six months, a year down the road, is to offer two different trims of the car. Okay. The first trim is gonna be like all out like this, but yep. then we're gonna offer. It's gonna be the same basically from here back. But it's got to have a simple front end. Maybe we'll be able to cut the cost, maybe like 20 bucks or something. Well, it would be nice is if that was offered as a kit. And then yeah. somebody decided, well, I do want to upgrade to this. It's literally just pop the two screws out. Yeah, and you'll have the parts to build the front end like this also separately. Like, I right. think that it's something that in the end, like, you'll be able to piece together, you know, get a bulkhead, get some arms, and get the hardware for it. Awesome. And, and mount it like that. But... My, my my thought process right now is, is get a race car out, uh, you know, that, that can compete at the highest level. And it, it's going to be so hard to – it was really hard to beat this car and get out of the fact that I love it. The GLR GT. I really <laughs> right. do. Like, I mean, I love this car. I think this is a phenomenal car. Um, and it was really hard to beat it. And lap time wise, I'm almost identical, but this car over five or eight minutes, I feel like is, is less stressful. Okay. It carries more corner speed. It's freer. That's saying but, a lot. With <laughs> less stressful says a lot. I mean. But but without, it's freer, but without lacking traction. Like, it's yeah. just, it, it's, and it's not numb. It's just, I think it's like pushing the easy button, <laughs> you know, the quote staples. <laughs> uh, it, it just feels to me like it's it's just an overall less stressful experience on the driver's stand. Sure. Okay. Right? Well, that's good. So what is your planned price point for this first well, run? They're, they're already announced. The three, okay. 360 out of the box is our, our out minimum box. advertised price. Okay. Right? That's what, what it's going to be. Like we, the, How we came to that price point, obviously, one of them was cost of manufacturing. Like well, We wanted to have... We could retail it lower or map it lower, but a main, main thing for me is I really want the, the, the retailers to make money on it. Like, I, in a way to give back to the community, when you are buying one of these cars and I'm setting a, a higher than necessary map, is I want the stores and my dealers that sell it to make money on it. I don't want them to make $30 on a kit. Right, I wanted to make a substantial amount of money um, so that they can also benefit from it, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's something that I'm setting it um, for people that don't understand map pricing or whatnot, they, sometimes they don't understand that it's it is super beneficial to, to for the retailers, like you said, to make money. Like yeah, they need, we have they to protect need our and, tracks, our clubs. Yep. You know, we got to protect those guys because then we don't have anywhere to run. Exactly. So well, I, that's super important. I, I am setting a little bit higher than, than than usual map. Yeah, it could probably be three forty or three thirty, but then. They would get cut out of the equation. The car is not cheap to make. We're not making a ton of money. And, sure. Uh, but as we grow, you know, I think, I mean, we're making 300 cars in this first run. I don't foresee us making bigger runs than that. I don't yeah. think that the price will ever really come down unless we make, like, the simple front end where we can cut down cost a little bit. But uh, we added just, for example, you take a GT and you buy it for 200 bucks and you add just the front shocks that's that's 26 so right there you're 246 you got a chassis that's 40 right um so at that point you're at 266 you add our rear end and that's like 80 bucks you're right there right you're at 346 uh, and you still don't have aluminum bulkheads aluminum knuckles right uh, uh upgraded diff um machined uh, body mounts of it, anything really extra like right. it so and that's all coming on here yeah so, so it's going to be good. something that you look at and you go oh, man it, it's got good value right yeah. it's 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 maybe a little bit higher sticker price but the the least amount that you got to spend on this car you got to at least get a chassis and you got maybe you can argue that you got to get the 505 i always say those two things are essential but you still won't have threaded shocks yeah. right so once you add all that you're at this price point right yeah that makes sense awesome 
Well, it seems like it's gonna be an awesome product and I'm kind of excited to see him out there running around. Thanks a ton for uh, showing everybody everything and I think that the community needs to check this out. Uh, if you're a serious racer or you're thinking about getting into super stock, uh, like myself, I think this is something that uh, it's probably worth looking at it's seriously. What it's worth is designed in the U.S., right? <laughs> yeah, I, and I think I think there's a lot of really cool options on it. So, I mean, you just watch the whole thing, and you, you tell me below what you think about this car and some of the options. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you check it out. Thanks. This is one by the nine.